news from Greek experts today, guys, about the situation in Santorini. Is Santorini safe? Experts are still warning of a possible volcanic eruption, tsunami, and earthquake. But what is interesting is they're talking about a 6.1 magnitude earthquake that has already happened, so to speak. It hasn't happened, but the accumulated energy has happened. I will tell you about this because this is an interesting point that they have that could give us more explanation about what's to come in the near future. We know that the Greek island of Santorini is experiencing an ongoing series of earthquakes. We've had several in the magnitude 4 today already. Over 20, 21,000 tremors by now have rattled the island since the start of this earthquake swarm on January 26th. So this situation, of course, as you believe, also amongst us has sp sparked widespread concern among residents and authorities as the uncertainty remains over whether this seismic activity is linked to a potential volcanic eruption or solely caused by tectonic shifts. And we know the Greek Researchers were more on the side, it's only tectonic, but I've told you about what's going on in Turkey in my last videos. They're preparing for a big event, their shorelines for tsunamis, for ash clouds. They believe that this is volcanic. And German and British researchers have also said they have evidence that this is fluid driven, hydrothermal fluids or magmatic fluids. So it's not clear still one side or the other, probably a mix of everything. So that's why the experts are closely monitoring the potential risks, right? we could see probably rather a small scale volcanic eruption than a big one, but you never know. Santorini has produced something really, really bad roughly 3,500 years ago. Maybe the biggest eruption in recorded history with a monster tsunami that also hit the coast of Turkey. And check out the video on the end screen. They have found the remains of these ash clouds and the tsunami. And what's unique, they have found traces of both in one place. That's why they're so worried that something like this might happen again, because this was devastating for the area. We've had several magnitude five earthquakes in the last few days. And Let's hear about the Geodynamic Institute of the National Observatory of Athens. And the tremors have even been felt in Athens. So Professor Eftumios Lekas, he's president of the Greek Earthquake Planning and Protection Organization. He has described the situation as unprecedented. And he explained to us that the sequence consists of many small and intermediate tremors and that this makes it so difficult to determine whether there's a primary earthquake that has already occurred and these are aftershocks or are they foreshocks but not all experts agree with his assessment of course and that's the interesting part there is seismologist Gerasimos Papadopoulos he has stated that while the current earthquake swarm that we're seeing is significant, he says similar seismic patterns have been observed in Greece before, citing historical examples from Fokida and Lesbos that has happened in the 1980s. And yes, there were similar swarms, but many, many experts say not like this, not that continuously like this one with the higher magnitudes, with, with no end in sight. So, of course, the question is, could a major earthquake strike Santorini next, like it did in 1956, a magnitude 7.7 .7 followed by a magnitude 6.9 that created a massive, massive tsunami. So we hear from another seismologist, guys, and I think, you know, we have to make our own picture of what we hear here. I'm just giving you the latest information. I really think this is a mix of volcanic and tectonic. So his name is Akis Tilentis. He suggested, and that is so interesting now, listen carefully, that a 6.0 magnitude earthquake is a possibility. And he has also warned that while the current 
tremors are within expected parameters, the situation remains dynamic, means it can change at any second. And what's interesting is, and he says that, quote, from the start, I noted that there is a complex relationship between fault lines and rising magma. Yeah, that's, if you see the area, there's a lot of fault lines, but there's also underwater volcanoes, Colombo, and there's, of course, the Santorini caldera with a magma chamber underneath. So, yes, the fault lines, they could trigger magma intrusions and vice versa. If magma gets out of magma chambers, it causes earthquakes because it's grinding through the ground. So, and here what he says is, the seismic energy released so far is equivalent to a 6.0 magnitude earthquake. So all these earthquakes, the cumulative energy, and I've shown you these charts basically on a regular basis every day. These are the, the most recent charts. So all the energy of all these earthquakes together matches a 6.0. And you might ask, well, there's fives. There's so many fives. There's so many fours. Uh, why only six? Because it accelerates dramatically, even if you only go one point higher from like uh, 4.9 to 5.0 or from 5.0 to 5.1, the strength and the energy released is accelerating radically. So there's a huge difference. And that's why he says a magnitude six and he also says if a large lateral fault near Amorgos is activated, that's the island that you see there, basically Colombo is in between and then it's this seismic swarm is enclosed by Amorgos and Santorini. So if a large lateral fault near Amorgos is activated, the magnitude could increase significantly. This scenario does not appear likely at the moment, but it cannot be ruled out. If it happens, it could lead to a major earthquake with potential tsunami implications. And we see this earthquake swarm moving back and forth, north, south, northeast, southeast. It's, it's moving back and forth between these two islands as if there was something that is rattling and moving. Is there a magma intrusion going on underneath that's constantly being filled with magma? Is this a fault line that is rupturing who knows? But other experts are telling him and, and they caution against arriving at conclusions so quickly. There is another seismologist, Manolis Skodilis. He argues that a standalone 6.0 magnitude earthquake is unlikely as the accumulated energy from the seismic swarm has already reached an equivalent of 6.1 in his opinion. So, and he suggests that a Further large tremor may not necessarily follow because of that. So his theory is there was stress in the fault line if this is tectonic or caused by fault lines and the stress has already been released. So much stress has already been released that it creates an accumulated energy of 6.1. So that's his theory that we won't see a larger one. But on the other hand, scientists in California, for example, have said that they found out that it sometimes this is not relieving stress if you see so many earthquakes. They think if we see in one year a lot of magnitude 3, it's a likelihood that we will see more in magnitude 4. And if we see a certain amount of magnitude 4, we could expect a magnitude 5 and so on. And this earthquake swarm a little bit is behaving like this because uh, last weekend we've had a lot of force and a lot of lots of force. And then all of a sudden we started getting in the five range and started seeing more magnitude 5 or 4.9 close to this. So I don't think that I surely agree with these scientists because they cannot explain or they are not explaining right now why they think this. Why is this, if this is a fault line or tectonic, is this different from California? And this is new research in California as well. It's usually people thought, oh, it releases stress, but not necessarily. But what I find really interesting, the 
accumulated energy. It's a lot of energy that is produced here. And that's why the residents are shaking constantly. It's rattling on the island of Santorini. And uh, the key, key challenge that still remains is this unpredictability of the seismicity. So some experts believe the seismicity could decrease over time, but they have no evidence for that yet. Others emphasize that continued movement along the fault lines means that the uncertainty remains high and this could last way longer. But the elephant in the room is, is a volcanic eruption of Santorini possible? And it's one of the biggest uncertainties, of course, right? Whether these earthquakes are linked to volcanic activity in Santorini. And, and we know the Greek opinion, many opinions have varied from opinions of other countries. So um, scenario A, there is Professor Evi Nomiku. It's a geological oceanographer and volcanologist clarified that the current seismic event are unrelated to volcanic activity at Nea Kameni or Santorini Central Volcanic Island. So here we go again. The Greeks say no. Quote, um, the epicenters are shifting northeast, but there is no indication that the large Amorgos fault has been affected. But she acknowledged the importance of monitoring both the seismic and volcanic systems closely. And they are monitoring Colombo, for example. Why are we not hearing anything from these measuring stations? They have just installed four more. And then there's scenario B um, in contrast. Um, Konstantinos Sunulakis has pointed out uh, to some signs that do suggest a potential eruption. And now I want to hear, what is it? So he has said, since summer, there has been ground deformation in the caldera area and gases have been observed rising from the Colombo underwater volcano. We have seen these fumaroles that are coming out underwater, bubbling. So we know there's signs, seismic unrest, land rise. If we see gas emissions, we should be on high alert. So he says, these combined with the seismic activity and the movement of volcanic fluids make a small scale eruption a possibility. And he also f further says, despite these observations, if an eruption were to happen, it would not be of catastrophic proportions. We're not talking about a massive eruption like the one 3,500 years ago. However, he says a minor eruption could still trigger fault movement and cause additional earthquakes. So even with a smaller one, the area would not be out of the woods. Um, but all these experts here in Greek, they're stressing that there's no certainty of an eruption. Of course, you don't know. The science is not progressed in any way that they could predict this. And there's many researchers, guys, that argue that the current seismic activity is primarily tectonic rather than magmatic and that while volcanic monitoring is necessary, an eruption remains hypothetical. I disagree with these guys. I'm more with the Turkish scientists. If you're interested in that, check out my video about that because it's really, really interesting what they're doing. And what's the timeline, the key events that we have seen? January 26th, this started. February 1st, authorities declare a state of emergency, which was quick, which was good. February 7th, Additional rescue teams deployed to Santorini and now also to Amorgos. And then February 12th, over 20,000 earthquakes recorded. Experts remain divided. And are tsunamis a risk for Santorini? Yes, they remain a concern because past seismic events in the region have de triggered destructive waves. You don't need an eruption for that. There is even a scientific study that was led um, by a scientist uh, and they assessed the tsunami risk for Santorini and Anafi and Amorgos. And this study has revealed or identified that the eastern and southeastern coasts of Santorini are particularly vulnerable to these tsunamis. So they're saying that a tsunami could flood the main power station on the island and even reach the airport if its magnitude is significant. And they're already preparing for tsunamis. 
on Santorini, you've seen these white sandbags. So should Greece prepare for a volcanic eruption and the tsunamis like Turkey does? I think they should because there's so much uncertainty. The prime minister said, well, let's prepare for the worst and hope for the best. But he also only meant the 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake. Better safe than sorry. Um, yeah, experts are saying not all earthquakes trigger tsunamis. Yeah, that's true. But we have so many earthquakes, right? Um, a tsunami would likely require a major undersea earthquake or a landslide, something that collapses because of these earthquakes, some of the fault lines. But th there are a lot of fault lines and craters down there. So what about uh, Anafi? The risk is lower due to steep coastal cliffs, right? The, the tsunami would really have to be super high, but with their exception of the port area. On the island of Amorgos, the northern part of the island, particularly the areas of Rachidi and Egiali, they are at higher risk due to their topography and human activity. Lots of people there. So overall, we can say that the, the Greek experts remain divided on the future of Santorini's seismic activity. Professor Dimitris Papanikolaou, he suggested that a 6.0 magnitude earthquake is within expectations, but is manageable. So, sh But we're even talking about another 7.7, .7, right? But he says, well, let's say it's 6 point something. Such a quake would cause damage, but it is within range. We can handle it, he said. And he rules out a larger event, but he doesn't give us an explanation. Then we have Kostas Papatsachos. He's a professor of seismology. He says a stronger quake cannot be ruled out. He says we are not heading towards stabilization. You don't see it. The swarms keep coming. And he says if the main fault breaks, that is causing this right now, assuming it is a fault. It could impact multiple islands, but the model suggests limited overall damage. So that's good news if he's right. But what many seismologists agree on is that this seismic activity is expected to persist for weeks or even months. Imagine that. That's bad for the tourist industry of Santorini. But they also say a sudden escalation is not guaranteed, right? Um, ongoing tremors are likely. What to expect for Santorini now? What should they do? Because experts, they are making some predictions, but they're also cautious about definitive predictions. And it's basically, they know that they don't know. You can't, this doesn't help for any preparation other than evacuate the whole island. That's what I would do. They have released a statement that all these experts, the seismic community, will reconvene on February 15th to reassess the situation again and issue new reports. I can't wait for that. So, yeah, guys, it is what it is. We have to wait and see as always. But um, check out this video. It's, it's really interesting what they found. And for some reason, this hasn't gotten so many views, but it's really, really interesting. And my YouTube statistic says my regular viewers do not show that much interest in this video. And, and I'm wondering why, guys, because it's really, really interesting. They have found the evidence of this massive mega tsunami and mega eruption that Santorini has produced in Turkey. So it's really interesting. Watch it. It's here in the end screen. And if you want to support the channel, go to mybuymeacoffee.com slash silky site. The link is in the description of this video. And thank you so much, guys, for supporting this channel with the coffees, with the supers, with your comments, with your likes to this video, with just being here. You're awesome. I love you guys. And I see you in the next one. Stay safe. Bye-bye.